well, I mean, I think it could be wrong. It's just like so far, I have not been convinced enough to set, to make bets that they're gonna be any better than they have been in the last three years. I think you're wrong. I, for your sake, I hope I am. For my sake. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the episode of the Fourth and Long Winded Podcast. This is episode number 12. Um, today, we're going to be talking about getting back into the Power Five conferences, talking about the Pac 12 um, and our state of the conference series. It's almost over. We're almost at the end. Only three conferences left after this, um, including the independents. But uh, here with uh, Cody, as always. How are you doing today, Cody? Hey, I'm tired, man. I've been to yeah. like a million weddings in the past three weeks, and I'm I'm ready to have a weekend at home. COVID's over. Everybody's weddings are back on. Shoot, ain't that the truth? All the weddings that were canceled last year, they're happening yep. this year, and then all the weddings that were supposed to happen this year are also happening this year. Immediately as it starts warming up, too. Like, they don't oh, yeah. wait until it yeah. gets to I summer. Have, like, I haven't enjoyed a, a weekend at home. Do, I mean, I don't time. enjoy yard work, but I'd like to do some. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll get into the Pac-12 here in a minute. Uh, I got four topics I want to hit on for some news. Um, this was just announced, I think, two days ago or yesterday. Dan Mullen for Florida has gotten a three-year extension, and he is now um, the third highest paid coach in the SEC. So good for good for him. I think it's deserved. He's done about as well as Florida's done and since probably Urban Meyer left, honestly. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um I, I don't like these teams that, you know, you get a guy and he is winning and then he may not be right there, but then you find like Georgia did with uh, uh, Mark Rick, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago. Like I thought like he's that, good, but he's not, he's not going to bring you to the promised land. But I thought that they were pretty dang close. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I could get into that, but I think that the, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And if, if I'm an athletic director, I, I extend him. Yeah. I want to keep him. Um, we have some more TV times and national games announced um, schedule wise, getting even closer. Um, we talked about this in the mountain West and the AAC. So both recently the UCF Boise state game, which is, we are both very excited for is going to be in prime time on ESPN at 7 p.m. on September 2nd. Um, So I'm looking forward to that. I'm wondering who else is playing, who else big is playing that weekend. Because I don't think. It's a Thursday night game. It's a Thursday night game. Thursday night. So we know that's not going to be a college game day. No, it is not, unfortunately. Uh, Okay. I forgot it was the Thursday night game. Yeah. Um, Penn State and at playing when they play at Wisconsin that same week, um, September 4th, that'll be the big noon Sunday game or Saturday game. Um, and then Oklahoma, Nebraska is also going to be a big noon uh, game on Fox, um, which means it's going to be 11 a.m. local time in uh, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's not too happy about that. Um, they're actually pretty understandably frustrated. Yeah, um, I'm not a fan of the like. I really, I really feel for the the teams out on the West Coast because they're some some of these teams are ki- having a nine thirty a.m. kickoff. Like, yeah, like it, that's it doesn't not, make sense. That's not it. But at the same time, like all the, the nobody pays attention to the West Coast because they play so late at night. Like, it's it's a give and take. Like, if it, you want to yeah, be, it, it is, I guess. But I don't like. I just feel like nine thirty is too early. Oh, it definitely like, is. But like, let. At least do 11. Like, 11 is doable, but yeah. I don't think a game should start any earlier than that. No. Um, we heard a couple weeks ago that Barry Alvarez uh, was uh, retiring as AD, I believe, effect- effective here soon, I believe. Yeah, in the next few weeks. Yeah. I think it's at the end of June, maybe. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but. Um, but they have found, Yeah. Yeah, they they found their replacement. Um, it's his right hand man, uh, man Chris McIntosh. He will be promoted to AD. Um, not surprising. No, not surprising at all. Mm-hmm. It's, Honestly, yeah. the Wisconsin athletic program has done quite well under yeah. under him, and so it makes sense to hire someone with him. 
you don't need fast I agree. Button. Finally, um, it's not really a news topic. It's more of just I found this interesting. <laughs> so Oregon plays Ohio State. Um, it's it's week two, I believe, actually. Yeah. Um, and so uh, on a local radio show recently, the Oregon AD came out and was talking all a big game about how they're going to go into Ohio State and show show Ohio State what Pac-12 football is really like this yeah. fall. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. We'll uh-huh. see how that goes for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, Pac-12 football looks like yeah. in the in the yeah. shoe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's all I have. So let's uh, let's get into the Pac-12. All right. So for the Pac-12, um, I I don't. I'm probably gonna end up saying way more than I thought I would. But as I was doing my research, I don't have a ton right now to say about a lot of these teams. Um, little bits here and there. Uh, I just don't – I don't exactly know how to feel about the Pac-12, and I've said that a lot for a lot of these conferences. And I think that's partially because 2020 was just a weird season where I, I didn't get the full picture for – especially the Big Ten and the Pac-12. I didn't get, get a full picture of what mm-hmm. they are doing – and uh, but the first team that we're going to talk about, I am I'm I know exactly what they're going to be this year. Uh, it's Oregon State for all yes, those, you know. Who, yes. Who, Oregon State uh, is going to be bad. Uh, that's that's really it. No, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. That's kind of what they've been throughout yeah. their entire existence. <laughs> yeah. So I just don't see this team improving much under Jonathan Smith. Uh, their, their head coach. Um, they have 11 commits and 10, 10 of them are three stars and one is a two star. Um, they're nationally ranked 109th in recruiting, 12th in the Pac-12, which is a massive drop. Oh my God, yes. From oh, the previous it. year at 54. Um, they were ranked 54 nationally last year. Uh, and then moving towards the 2022 recruiting season they are currently ranked at 44 so it looks like maybe this was uh, an off year it also is a smaller class um i was very surprised looking into um looking at their past recruiting rankings over the last five years you think about oregon state and where they're at and like who's around them in terms of com- competition for recruiting you got obviously oregon in the same state and then you got washington and washington state just the state above and then you got all the california teams um, so you got to imagine they're probably on the bottom rung, but they still have recruited fairly well compared to com- comparatively relatively being in the fifties, right. pretty much the last five years or so. Um, yeah. Better than so, Purdue, which is pr- Purdue's probably kind of thought of as a better program than Oregon state, yeah. but they recruit better than Purdue does. Yeah. I always, I always manage to bring it back to how bad Purdue is. <laughs> I mean, I don't think pretty is that bad. But anyways, uh, back to Oregon State. Uh, the university has – it has pretty decent facilities. Like, I would honestly say their facilities are probably middle tier for the Pac-12. Um, and – but they but they pale in comparison to uh, the big brother in the state, up, yeah. up in Eugene. They did get a. They did get one over on them this past year. They did upset Oregon this past yeah, year. They did, which that that's a big deal. Um, see, the thing about Jonathan Smith is he was hired away from Washington State when when Washington State's offense was cooking, and he was the mm-hmm. offensive coordinator, and he just hasn't been able to do the same thing at. Or it's, it's the offense has been fine. It's the defense yeah. that has just been absolutely terrible. And yeah. And that's that's the reason that they that they're as bad as they are. So and uh I, they just don't have the money to keep up with Oregon. And I think that that really sets them behind because local recruiting is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um if if you know, unless you're Alabama, Ohio State, or Texas, really. You can, I mean, or Oregon, I mean, you can pull like nationally ranked players and pull, pull them out of other states, but you have to recruit your state well. Yeah. Um, and they're not doing that. They're losing everyone to Oregon. Um, and they're one of the like few power five teams. There's, there's a couple that's willing to travel to group of five teams and play them. And I just don't think that's a good sign. Um, 
I, I hate the division between the power five and the group of five, but if you're a power five team, you don't go play at group of five schools like Wyoming, uh, which yeah. I think they have scheduled sometime in the next few years. Um, and like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Well, that kind of leads us into our the schedule for this year, um, which I'll run through real quick. Um, I mentioned Purdue just a second ago. They do open at Purdue. Um, I think that should be a win for Purdue to start this yeah, season. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd put money on that. But I don't know what this team – I never do. Um, then they play home to Hawaii, home to Idaho, um, and then they get into conference play starting at USC – home to Washington at Washington state. So, and then Utah. So they got a pretty brutal um, open First conference stretch. play. U- USC, Washington, Washington state's not as good as they were a couple of years ago. And then Utah. Um, and then they play at California, at Colorado, Stanford, Arizona state. And then they finish off at Oregon this year um, up in Eugene for that rivalry game. Uh, but yeah, isn't that game called like the war or something like that? Uh, they changed it. Uh, it was called the Civil War, and actually, it may That's be right. now just called the War, um, but they changed it this past year. Gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I have. For, yeah, for for like, what's your over under on wins for them? I mean, if you if you win, if you, if they win three to four games, I think you're happy. Yeah, I I'm happy. At, at, I think. They have four maybe you're not happy. You're not happy, but no, you're not no, right. but you're at least like, okay, this wasn't a wash. Yeah. Um I probably said it over under at two and a half, honestly. Yeah, um, I I put that there. I, maybe three and a half. I they have five winnable games. Yes. Um, they will not win all five of those games. Uh and honestly, I, okay, so I also pulled this stat. The last time they had a winning season was 2013. Yeah. They only have two 10 win seasons in their history. (laughs) And both of them did come from 20 or from 2000 to uh, 2013. So, I mean, I guess they're in the golden years of Oregon state football, but sorry, you have great color scheme, but nothing else. Fantastic. And they've produced the the best Bengals wide receivers ever. Chad Johnson and TJ Huffman both went to Oregon state. Keep, keep producing those wide receivers for us, please. Yeah. And thank you. That's all I got. Yeah, I don't have anything else on them. Uh, all right, so our next team is the Arizona Wildcats. Um, their national ranking for recruiting is 78th, which actually is a, is a bit of a fall off from their previous national ranking of 58th. Um, but what's funny is they stayed exactly the same and where they're at in the Pac-12. At yeah. 11th, both years. Um, and then their 2022 class looks like it's it's up higher, but I I, I see that falling considerably. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it's going to fall as far as 78th, so they should be better in 2022 recruiting-wise. Um, Jed Fisher is their head coach. Uh, they have 18 commits this year, and eight, all 18 are three stars. Um, they have solid facilities, uh, right in the middle of the conference and, uh, they should have a lot going for them. They're in a pretty desirable area of the country and they haven't been the worst team in the conference. Uh, but I don't, they were last year. They were, they were last year, but like I'm (laughs) statistically record everything over time, over time. They have not been awful. Um, Kevin Sumlin kind of ran this program into the ground. Like, yeah, Kevin he was only there for three years. And, and Rich Rodriguez he, had done a really good job, actually, yeah. at Arizona. Um, but Kevin Sumlin, he started off like, um, what was it, seven and six, and then five and seven, and then four and eight. And yeah. then they went 0 and five last year. So it's wow. just been a downward trend. Um, I think Kevin Sumlin should have taken a few years off after Texas A&M, but yeah. um, I think that would have helped uh, Arizona out a lot. And they yeah. Have. I don't so think they should have fired Rich Rodriguez, if, if we're being no. entirely honest. No, I don't know what they were trying to achieve because he was basically the ceiling of what they've ever been able to do. So, you know. Yeah. 
I don't know. So they are actually, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but they're actually still currently on a 12 game losing streak. Um, they went on oh. five last year. <laughs> so 12 game losing streak. And the, the most recent was the humiliating 70 to seven loss in their final game to Arizona state. Yeah, that was rough. Um, that was, I watched uh, that was game. Terrible. That was rough. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. I love watching a team just get yeah. brutalized. That was rough. Um, just to give some statistical background to how bad they were um they were statistically the worst offense if offense and defense in the pac-12 they allowed 39.8 points per game uh, nice. now obviously that 70 burger awesome. that they got at the uh last game of the season probably bumped that up a little bit but still well, i i think i know why that happened uh, because they're a basketball school now so they were trying to match the basketball team gotcha gotcha makes sense Good for them. And it, it, I mean, this is pretty much rock bottom, I think, for the football program. I think it can only really go up from here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Jed Fish is interesting. Um, I'm a Patriots fan. He was the Patriots uh, quarterback coach yeah. um, before he got hired. Yeah, I was actually um, – so I did a little re- research on him, but I don't know. I don't know shit about him. No. I, I know he's it... been an assistant in the NFL for a long time. Yeah, and, and – uh, Was interim coach at UCLA for a hot second. But for two games. After they fired Jim Mora uh, for yeah. two games. Um, and the thing is, like, I don't understand why they hired him. Um, I mean, I guess there's, like, who else are you going to hire? But, like, of the new coaches, like, I did not know who this was at all. Maybe he just um, killed it in the interview. I don't know. Maybe. I hope he kills it, you know, winning – a game, a that game need for them. They'll they'll win a game this year. You yeah. know why? We'll talk about it. I'll tell you exactly the game they'll win. All right, it's not let's, gonna be the. Let's go, let's go into their schedule then. It's not the first game. They open up in a neutral site game against BYU. Yeah, they're not um, winning that. No, that that's that's gonna be played at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. All um, the Mormons are headed to Sin City. How is that yeah. gonna work? <laughs> Didn't even think about that. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm just picturing this now. Because <laughs> BYU tailgates sound like a time. Yeah. Not a good time. Uh, yeah, that's that's a bucket time. list item. Yeah. Just, yeah. Not, just not to even see it. Just, just, just to, to see it. Yeah. There. Witness that. Uh, then they play home to San Diego State. And I don't then, think uh, they're winning that either. No. Uh, here's the win, though. They are home to Northern Arizona, the third game of the season. Yeah, that should be a win. And then they get into conference play, uh, open at Oregon, which is tough. And then UCLA at at Colorado. UCLA, we'll talk about them in a bit, but I'm optimistic on them. Um, Washington at USC, Cal, Utah at Washington State, and then they finish it off with the interstate rivalry at Arizona State. You know, looking at the schedule, they could be potentially worse than Oregon State this year. It's going to be a close battle. You know, you got you got one in the North Division, one in the South Division, battling it out to be. Who's uh, you know who they aren't as bad as? Who? Kansas. That's, you know what? Very true. You see that uh, Kansas is getting a bunch of Buffalo transfers now? I did. Uh, Buffalo is dicked. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Good thing neither one of us picked Buffalo to True Facts win, win, win the Mac. True uh, Facts. That's all I got on it. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else on Arizona. Don't expect them to be good. If they win, if they win four games, I'll be surprised and happy for them. Yeah. Yep. Um, moving on to Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, so I was kind of shocked looking back on the recruiting rankings the last couple of years. Um, they 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 got up into the 30s a couple of times, yeah, which shocked me. Well, I think they had that one season that was like super good. They got up to like ninth in the country. Yeah, the yeah. They were like undefeated, and then they stumbled a few games. And I think they like rode that to a recruiting like coup for a number of years. And I mean, do you know anything about Boulder, Colorado? It's a cool city. It's a cool ass city. Yeah, it's a cool city. Um, well, and and so that that's actually in my notes here. Um, so Carl Durrell is is it's a he's was a coaching hire that wasn't super exciting to me. Um, but also like I didn't think it was a bad hire. Um, 
I think it was already on staff when, uh, uh, can't think of his name. Uh, was at Michigan State now? Uh, Mel Tucker. Mel, yeah, when Mel Tucker left, I think Carl was already on staff. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but, and I think he pulled together a decent 2020 season. Um, but overall, he's 39 and 29 as a head coach. Um, and I just, I think the Pac-12 needs a lesson in hiring coaches. Um, cause I agree I, with that, but I'm actually kind of optimistic on Colorado. They went four and two. two. They went four and two this past year, which was a surprise to pretty much everybody. everybody. They, nobody, yeah. nobody was expecting Colorado to be that good. Um, they went four and two while also being ranked in the bottom half of the conference in both offense and defense. So um, that's where I'm kind of I'm optimistic on Carl Carl Dorrell um, being able to coach them up, even if they're not as good as right. the other opponents. Um, they get another one of those good recruiting classes. They could be right back in the top twenty five. Yeah, um, I think Colorado is a cool school. Uh, they have some great traditions. Like, uh, like I think they're psychopaths, but running with the buffalo on the field, like that's that's freaking cool. Um, that's some cool stuff. And so many people want to live in Colorado right now. Like, it's one of the quickest growing states, and it's just a boom that's happening there. And uh, it amazes me that honestly they haven't been better at recruiting because you could sell that um to kids mm -hmm. even if you don't make it to the nfl you're in colorado which is a great place to find a job a great place to live after school um i don't know uh, mm -hmm. i i i can i i also share your optimism i'm just uh being cautiously optimistic because i'm understandable I the i'm not sold on his track record mm -hmm. understandable yeah. Let's get into their schedule real quick. They open uh, home to Northern Colorado. Um, then they play. And they got a couple non-conference games that are pretty juicy. They, they host both of them. They're home to Texas A&M. And then they're home to Minnesota. Both are going to be pretty good games. And they get to host both of them, which is interesting as well. Yeah. And then they go into conference play. They play at Arizona State, home to USC, home to Arizona, at Cal, at Oregon, Oregon State at UCLA, Washington, and then they finish at Utah. So I think this is like one of the more fun schedules. Yeah, for sure. Um, that we've reviewed. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know anything about Northern Colorado, but uh, Texas AM and Minnesota, both pretty exciting teams. I think that they lose to Texas AM, but I mm -hmm. think they could potentially beat Minnesota. I agree. Um, and then, you know, I think it's going to, we'll see what they do otherwise in the Pac-12 play, but it, it's going to be interesting for sure. Yep. All right. You want to move on to, yeah. uh, yeah, let's hit up Washington, Washington State. State. Let's head to Pullman. Cougars. Um, so nationally, uh, they ranked 59th, uh, previously in 2020, uh, the 2020 class was 55. And next year is 55. So they're, they're, they're consistently right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Pac-12 ranked ninth. Uh, previously it was 10th. Next year it's ninth. Um, I think for me, I actually, I, this is probably the team I'm, I don't want to say I'm most excited for, but I'm very excited for this team. I like Nick Rolovich. I... I watched him at Hawaii. Um, he did a very good job with Hawaii. And I think Hawaii, despite it being pretty and you'd think it would be an easy place to recruit to, it's not. It's it's a harder place to win. And he did that. Uh, brought them to a Mountain West championship game. And then once Mike Leach left, he took this job. And I think it, it really suits his personality. And I think the reason that I, I, I know a lot about this team. I uh, kind of became an undercover fan of Washington State, which also doesn't make sense because I'm you don't like Washington Mike. Fan. Huh? Was it because of Mike Leach? Partially, but it was like I liked watching them play when Mike Leach was there. It wasn't particularly because of Mike Leach, but I say, I liked, you don't like Mike Leach. It's not that I don't like Mike Leach. I think Mike Leach is a super fun coach. Okay. Uh, I just don't, I'm not sold on him at Mississippi State yet. Gotcha. I liked him at Washington State. 
gotcha. because Washington State has no expectations. Yes. Uh, you know, if, if you win three games, they're going to drink and be happy anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was not doing that. He was winning 11 games. Um, and so they were super happy. And that really, uh, in Pullman, pulled the, pulled the university together and started some serious investment in the university. They renovated their stadium on Mike Leach that was there. They created a massive football ops center in one of the end zones while Mike Leach was there. Now that I'm excited about Nick Rolovich, he has a very similar, I don't, I don't think it's the same like play style as Mike Leach, but he has a very uh, similar personality where he does like quirky things that endear you to him. I watched uh, a good part of their, their spring game. And instead of doing a coin, a coin toss for their spring game, uh, I, I don't remember what position it was, but they had them go head to head and like, I don't know. The kickers. Yeah. 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 It was kickers. Yeah. And it was just, that was awesome. Yeah. Some I XFL wish the shit. NCAA rules to do that. Like, Some XFL shit. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, and so it's just that little things like that I, I, I see, and I think that it works to get those players that maybe are under the radar. Maybe that's his, what he's going to do. The unconventional player that is going to be good, he develops them and makes it work. Yeah. Um, that's the way I feel about Washington. That, and like you said before that's that's the way it's going to work that's yeah. at Washington State that's the way it's going to work it's the way it has to work you're not going to pull uh these five-star kids but you can win a lot of games in Washington State if you have the right mindset yep especially now that the foundation yeah. is laid yep I don't have anything more on Washington State let's get in their schedule um home to huge home to Utah State to open the season. Then they play Portland State. Um, so they should start off with two wins. I know we talked about Utah State in our last episode, and they're they're not in a great state. Um, but uh, Portland State should be a win as well. Then they play – then they open conference play. Um, USC at Utah, at California, home to Oregon State, home to Stanford. Then they play BYU at home. And then at Arizona State, at Oregon, Arizona, and then they finish with their interstate rival, Washington. And that'll be at Washington. Yeah. Um, I think they're, I mean, obviously they're they're non-conference is relatively bleh. Yeah, I mean BYU, that's that's actually a decent op- opponent um, yeah. that they're pulling to uh Pullman, which will be nice. They'll fill the stadium for that. Um BYU travels really well, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I I I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't know their win total honestly. Um, I think maybe you know seven games is uh, is optimistic. Seven games is super optimistic. Yeah, optimistic. They went one and three last year. Yeah, and I, I'm saying seven games is optimistic, but like I'm looking at this and I could see them pulling out. I could see them winning about one about five of the games and maybe they surprise me i think that's a that's fair five games probably set the over under at four and a half yeah but yeah now nah, probably set at five and a half i don't know okay. i'm not i don't set lines for a living i don't freaking know <laughs> we should start start our own betting book yeah for our two fans yeah uh, all right I, I'm ready to move on to Arizona State. If you are fighting Herm Edwards, man, I'm yeah. So I want this team to be good so bad. Uh, I don't, uh, but I like. So here's my thing. I did not like the Herm Edwards hire. I was one of the few oh, people who did not like the Herm Edwards hire, and I think I'm going to be proven wrong. I'm I'm okay with being proven wrong on this one. Um, but I thought that this was one of those flashy hires that didn't make any sense. Um, he has a losing record. I think it. I didn't think it made sense for Herm Edwards. Like I, I didn't. I, yeah, he, I didn't think it made sense for anybody. Like it didn't make sense for Herm Edwards. It didn't make sense for Arizona State. Um, and here's my reasoning. Uh, he has a losing record as an NFL coach. He's made some playoff games, but never won one. Uh, he hasn't coached. 
he hadn't coached in college since the 1980s. You can motivate people to do whatever you want, but if you can't win games, like you're not going to be able to motivate them to win. Um, and nothing about the hire for me made sense to fire a coach that had four winning seasons in six years and hire a coach that had never won at any level and hadn't coached in college football since 1989. It just didn't make sense to me. And I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong. I actually really like Arizona state. They have a great stadium, great facilities. It's a cool university. They have a cool color scheme. Um, they're fun to watch. I just, it didn't make sense on like, I'm not a huge Herm Edwards fan. So it's like, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I just, I don't know. I, I loved Arizona state. Like you said before, for the colors, uniforms, and right. I like Herm Edwards, you know, growing up watching him on TV. And I, I mean, I saw the tail end of his coaching career in the NFL, but like you said, he wasn't terribly successful as a coach. Um, I don't know. I have faith in it. He recruits well. This year was a down oh, year. Yeah. He, yeah. This year was definitely a down year. They're 52nd ranked, but I mean, they've been in the 20s and in the 30s these past five years. So I am, I, and I'll even eat crow to say like he has been much better than I thought he would be. Mm -hmm. um, thus, he far. just, he's got the talent and they're, they've shown signs of yes. being, of breaking I mean, out, but they just, 76 points in one game is a pretty good sign. Yeah, but like you look at they went two and two last year, eight and five the year before, seven and six the year before that. That's that's the three years that Herm Edwards has been the coach. He's going into his fourth season. Yeah. So they've been slightly above average, basically. And you know what? It's it's hard to win eight games. Like it's it is. not something that most teams do. Yeah. Um but I think a lot of the expectation now is with that recruiting, with the, the big name head coach is all right, let's take that next step and start getting to the conference championship game at the very least. Like, and I don't just, see that happening. There's the South division is actually pretty tough. Like, yeah. That's, and that's why I don't really see it happening. Yeah. That it has the potential to be. Yeah. Potential potential is there. Um, and it could happen. I could be entirely wrong. It's just, it, it's tough to get there any given year. Mm-hmm. Um, all right um talk about the schedule a little bit and then we'll yeah. move on um home to southern utah to open up the season um then they play home to unlv and then they go at byu and then they start conference play colorado at ucla stanford at utah washington state usc at washington at oregon state and then home to arizona to finish off the season i haven't really thought much about what the record would be i'd say two and one in the non-conference and then <sighs> i i'm counting their games there's nine nine games that i would consider betting on them winning i could see that i um, i think i think the goal for this year should be nine wins they've gotten yeah. to eight wins two years ago if they can get to nine wins and be in position for the conference championship game, not necessarily make it, but at least be in the conversation to make yeah, it. I, I think that's a successful season. And All shoot, right. I mean, they have the potential to start off one, two, three, four. If BYU they, might be down too this year. I, I think I've, they I've will kind of, be. I've uh, soured on BYU. I actually, I, I, would bet be. that, I would bet that Arizona State's going to beat BYU this year. Yeah. Um, especially, well, it's in, it's in, it's at Provo. It's in Provo. So may, that's a little bit more of a toss up. Say, I, yeah. it, I think they're honestly, Arizona state, if they, if they play their cards, right, could have the potential to roll into Utah undefeated. We can talk about more U, about UCLA. I think UCLA is better than them. Um, but We'll talk more. I, I could still see that. Yes. I, I don't think it's it could impossible. Happen. It could yes. happen. I don't know if it will, but at least I could see them rolling into UCLA undefeated. Yeah, definitely. That's where I was. I thought you were going to stop uh, uh, until you said Utah, because I could totally see 4 0 going into UCLA. Yeah. When we talk about UCLA, I'll, I'll give you my opinion on them. All right. Well, next up, we have the Stanford Cardinal, um, who were kind of surprising this past year. Um, they ended up going 4 and 2. Um, which a lot of people weren't expecting them to be very well. Uh, a lot of turnover from the year before. Then they had 
um, a lot of restrictions put on them during for COVID and like they weren't even allowed to practice at their practice facility. They had to go somewhere else off campus yeah. to practice. Yeah, um, that was had, it was so awkward. And it was like a 20 mile bus ride or something yeah. like that. And it's like, God, that's that's, so that's why in itself. David Shaw has been there for a minute now, and I think this might be one of his best coaching jobs, <laughs> honestly, going four and two under the circumstances with yeah. the roster that they had. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, recruiting definitely took a drop, um, over the past, since the past five years where they were yep. in the late teens, um, for the most part, they were 50th for this coming season. Um, I don't know. So I, I like David Shaw. That's, I like David Shaw a lot. I do not I like, I don't want to, um, I, I hope that no one important is watching this because I'm about to say something that's, uh, I mean, I like David Shaw, but I think that David Shaw is on an undercover hot seat. Okay. Um, I disagree, but give me your, give me your, uh, well, because they were at such an elite level, these last few years have been a little bit disappointing. They were a lot better than, than where they are now. They've dropped pretty significantly. And I think that Stanford is one of those schools that cares about athletics a lot more than they pretend they do because at at their Olymp at the Olympic level, they have like national championships and world championships and they care a lot about those Olympic sports. So it would be obvious that they care about football too. um, The sport that actually makes money for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I I don't, I'm not going to say like he's being fired. But I hope he has a good season this year because if he doesn't, I think that. I think this year could be a rough year. I, I don't think they're, I, I think it's going to be another year or two before they're back. They're going to be losing their starting quarterback, Davis Mills. They're losing some offensive linemen. They're losing, they're losing a bunch of people from this past year where um, they're going to need to replace. I think this is going to be a down year for Stanford, but I think it, I, I, it's fine that it's a down year, but I think that they need to make a bowl game. Or, Let's get into their schedule a little bit. Um, They do have an interesting opening game. Um, They play a neutral site game at Jerry World uh, versus Kansas State. That's a weird, yeah, weird matchup. I'm not upset about it. I love weird matchups, but to be at Jerry World, that's a weird matchup. Um, Then they start conference play a little earlier than other schools. They play at USC. Then they jump back into the non-conference play at Vanderbilt. Yep. Um, then they jump back into the conference, play UCLA, Oregon, at Arizona State, at Washington State, Washington, Utah, at Oregon State, California, and then the big one, they finish home to Notre Dame. Um, so one thing I like about their schedule is that they get all of the tough teams at home. Mm-hmm. that's really I, nice. Yeah. I mean, you get Oregon at home, you get UCLA at home. Washington, Washington at home, and you get Notre Dame at home. Mm-hmm. They've got to win at a minimum one or two of those games. Yeah, being at home. I agree. Um, and then you know that gives you two wins. Maybe you beat Kansas State. You're going to beat Vanderbilt, so you got your yeah. four. Yeah. And then you just win a couple games on the road, and you're at six and six, and you're in a bowl. Mm-hmm. There you go. David Shaw, we've we've mapped out the way. Just that just do it, man. Out. Just just do it. Why can't you just do it? That's Oregon. They, they just do it. Ah, you're right. All right. Uh, I don't have anything else to say on them. Uh, let's move on to Washington. Yeah. Uh, Washington is is my favorite team in the Pac-12. Okay. Um, not to win this, like particularly this year. Just your um, personal favorite. It's my personal favorite in the Pac-12. I love their stadium. I think it's one of the coolest stadiums. It's built, built right on Puget Sound, um, and they sailgate, and I think that that's cool. It's a stadium that I would – it's probably number one on my stadiums to go to a game at. just think it's beautiful. Fair enough. Um, and I feel optimistic about them this year. Uh, they have a big bit, they're in a big, big metropolitan area, so they can recruit that. 
And then they can also pull kids from around the country because the Pacific Northwest is now cool. Um, and they had a great 2020 season. Uh, they should have been in the Pac-12 championship, but because of COVID, COVID. The, that, that was, that was uh, not available to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I think Jimmy Lake was um, a great hire. I mean, it was kind of an obvious hire because it was yep. the coordinator under Chris Peterson. Um, when, but I think he stepped in and he's kind of just kept that championship mentality yep. um, in the program, kept that defensive mentality yes. in the program. Yeah, I mean, um, when you still when you, a great defense. Yeah, and when you have a when you have a winning program, why change it? Why change yeah. it by bringing in somebody new? Mm -hmm. let's, bring, let's just promote somebody that's used to it knows what to do and makes it happen mm -hmm. um and I, I agree great hire we forgot to say what they were ranked uh nationally in recruiting uh which they're at 36 this year which is actually down previously in 2020 they were at 17 and next year they're at 41 and i see that also like i see them moving down in the recruiting to like the twenties or maybe the thirties. They do have a big pickup this year in recruiting. They got a five-star quarterback, a uh, yeah. local guy, Sam Heward. Um, That's going to be exciting. Yeah. So. They had one five-star, three, four stars and 11, three stars. Solid class. 15 Very overall class. commits. It's actually not a huge class, but solid. I've noticed that all, I think it's because of that NCAA rule that, um, you're allowed to have another year of eligibility yeah. because of COVID. Um, so a lot of the, I noticed in the PAC 12, especially a lot of them have smaller classes, classes, and they've dropped in the rankings pretty yeah. significantly. Um, so I don't think it's too much to look into um, in terms of the ranking yeah, classes on an average ranking are still really good. So. Yeah. So for their schedule, they uh, start out uh, hosting Montana who I in a previous episode confused with uh wyoming they're the same place they're essentially the same uh yeah. but wyoming has a much cooler stadium than montana they just um, are cooler in general much cooler a better better color scheme everything anyways uh just gonna so shit on montana for a second <laughs> then uh washington heads out to pure michigan uh, big game house. big old game big game um that's that's gonna be a fun game i think should be a good gonna game. Be, that's gonna be like a 10 to 3 final <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's gonna be Defense. a low, low scoring knock them around football game yeah and i i would personally I, I i have plans that weekend but personally i would love to go to that game that'd be a game yeah. i'd love to go see yeah um uh, honestly, like Jimmy Lake is not on the hot seat at all. Whereas I think uh, Jim Harbaugh is has a little bit warmer of a seat. So I think that is a must win for Michigan. Um, I think they should win that game. I think they should. Uh, but Washington could surprise me. Yeah. Washington's going in their house money. Like, yeah, all the yeah. pressures on Michigan. Like, yeah. Washington loses. Nobody cares. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's just go but back Michigan to loses and they in trouble. Yeah. And uh, Washington's right back on the map. They probably jump up into the top 20, top 15 easy, rankings. Easy. So. easy. Yeah. So then they host Arkansas State and the uh, Fighting Butch Joneses. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they host Cal. Uh, then they go to Oregon State. Um, and then they're off and get UCLA at home which I think is a benefit to them, but UCLA actually plays in Husky Stadium really well um, all the time for some reason. Uh, then they're at Arizona, and that's an evening game, so it'll be very cold, so I think it actually suits Washington's uh, strengths better. Um, at Stanford, when they host Oregon, uh, and they host Arizona State at Colorado, and they host Washington State. So they get the rivalry game at home. They get some of the tougher games at home. Uh, it, it sets up to be a pretty good schedule for Washington. Yeah. 
I agree. Um, over under, I'm looking they can win one eight and a half, three, nine and a half, or five, six, seven, eight. I could see him winning 10 games. Yeah, I could see him winning 10 games. I could, I mean, and really, like, there's a couple, like, if they, if things go their way, they play really well and they're better than we expect. 11. I think the only games they won't be favored in are at Michigan, home to Oregon, and that might be it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think they'll be favored in all but those games. I think, yeah, yeah, they should be favored in all of those games. Um, I really, yeah. really see that optimism around Washington. Yep, yeah. I'm. I'm right. more optimistic about now looking at the schedule. I'm more optimistic than I was, and that's saying something. Look out for Washington this year, y'all. Just, just, just keep an eye on them. Yep. All right. Uh, Utah is uh, the next team that I have here. Yep. The Utes. Um, the Utes, uh, and I'm pretty high on Utah. Um, okay. And not particular. I haven't looked at their schedule yet this this year. Um, I gotta. I have to pull up their schedule. Uh, but I'm I'm high on them just based off the fact that they have a coach that's been there a while. He's a good coach. You know how long he's been there? Yeah, 16 years. 18 years. 18 years. He took over for Urban Meyer, and I know. Just- hasn't left he's entering his 18th season this this coming year will be his 18th year huh he's only had two losing seasons in that time yep which is impressive honestly if you're utah you after having urban meyer take you undefeated and whatever uh, maybe they weren't undefeated but they were really good yeah and a lot of those a lot of the times where these big coaches leave these smaller i mean they were in the uh, mountain west at that yep. point or yeah um, they just nosedive, and Kyle Whittingham has stabilized it and kind of kept it going. Um, yeah, well, and they had that season. I think it was, I think it was 2019, where yeah, they they made the Pac-12. Was it the Pac-12 championship game it where was. they lost? Yeah, they lost to Oregon, I believe. And the... yeah, and if they would have won that, there was a I, there was talk that they would have made the playoffs. Yeah, um, I think it would have been a, like a toss up that year between them and somebody else. I don't remember who, but. You can't ask for more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, looking at their schedule also, and uh, sorry, before we hit their schedule, uh, they have a great stadium. They have nice football ops facility, practice facility, and uh, they recruit well, but then the kids get coached up. Like they're mm-hmm. improved from when they get there. Yeah. Um, that's That's what I have to say about, specifically the the culture around the program looking at their schedule um they've got we is it weber state or weber state weber state weber state uh at 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 home and then they are at byu that's their their rivalry game i think they win that game see okay but i'm gonna stop you there i don't think they win that game and i'm actually kind of down on utah um but the only reason is they need to find good quarterback play. They need offense. Their defense is yeah, fine. Right. Their defense is really good, but they're not going to win anything of significance. They're not going to beat anybody they should. They uh, they shouldn't be. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I agree. I, I think they could win at BYU though. I they think BYU is going to be down this year. I, I just don't um, think it's like all right. Knock that off as a win. Like yeah. they struggled on offense this past year. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's a definite win. But I'm saying it, it is I, – I would favor them. Yeah. Um, and then they're at San Diego State, which I actually think is a tough, tough game being at San Diego State. Um, but I think that they win that game. They should. They should win that game. Um, they go to Washington State. Realistically, they should win that game. Um, and then they're at USC. I don't think they win that game. Mm-mm. I – don't know if they're winning against Arizona State. I don't um, think they beat Arizona State. They should beat Oregon State. Uh, I don't think they beat UCLA. So we're we're now at three losses. Yeah. Yeah. I think they 
Stanford's yeah. a toss up. Stanford's a toss up. Since it's at Stanford, um, I think it's a toss up. Yeah, at Arizona, I think that's also a toss up. No, it's not. Should no, be no. a win. Should, should be a be win. win. Should be a win. Yeah. Um, Oregon I, loss. I think they lose to Oregon and uh, Colorado's a toss up. Being at home, I think that it's a toss up with Colorado. So you know they have the potential to only lose four games, games or yeah. the potential to lose six. Yeah. I think that's right where they're if they the six and six is probably a relatively good season. Um, but but yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for a seven and five season personally. Yeah. Um in that ballpark. Next, next team who I think that we're actually gonna have a, some fun conversation on is UCLA. Um they're nationally ranked at 31, fourth in the in the conference, 33rd. Chip Kelly is five. back. Uh, I disagree. Um, I think that he has the hottest seat in the conference by far. Um, okay. okay. I, I saw signs of improvement last year. I mean, I guess I just didn't see enough signs of improvement to make me think that they're going to be good. Um, he's he's I, pulled pretty, pretty good recruiting classes ever since he's been there. And he's been there quite, what, now four years? Is this his fourth season? Mm-hmm. Or... or Yep, entering his fourth season. Entering his fourth season, and they have not been good at all. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And I just, I don't know. I, so let me lay out my case, all right? All right, lay out your case. So Chip Kelly, first thing, you think offense and you think terrible defense. Right. Last year, defense improved dramatically. They were, one of the, they were in the top half of the Pac-12 in terms of defense while also still having the second-best scoring offense in the Pac-12. So the offense is still there. Defense is improving. They have probably behind Keaton Slovis at USC, the second-best uh, quarterback in the conference. Um, I can't remember his name. He's got one of those hyphenated names. Um, but he's really good. Trust me. I, I promise you I that he's really you. good. Um, in, so they went three and four this past year. Um, they won three games. Pre, um, including uh, USC. Did they end up? No, they didn't beat USC. Oh. Um, but, and then they, they lost four, but all four of those games were extremely close. They all were extremely. lost by one possession or le- or one possession. And I just, I, I think Chip Kelly's figured it out at UCLA after his tenure in the NFL. And that didn't just was terrible. And now he's back in the PAC 12 where he belongs out on the West coast doing his crazy offense and, and he's finally figured out the defense. He's finally got the defense going in the same, in the right direction. And I think they can, I think they're USC's main competition in the South division this year. Okay. Um, so. I'm not that high on them. Um, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I, I personally think that they are probably going to struggle a little bit because their second game is against LSU, and I think LSU is better than them significantly. Well, they should be, yeah, and, but LSU And I think that LSU is probably going to try and blow the tires off UCLA, um, and I think that that could demoralize them. And then I think there's a potential trap game in Fresno State. Um, uh, not to say that I think Fresno State's going to beat them, but that's a potential trap game for me coming off a, a game against LSU. Even if they beat LSU, I think that Fresno State's a trap game. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, I don't know. I just, uh, I personally haven't, I've I've watched a few games. I haven't watched a ton of games for UCLA because I'm just not a West, not a huge Pac-12 guy. Um, But, and I'm also usually too drunk to pay attention to the games um, at this point in time. Uh, But the few games that I have watched, I haven't been impressed. And I think the two of them were against Cincinnati and like, I really think that Chip Kelly helped Cincinnati uh, become as good a program as they are because the first like really defining win for Luke Fickle was uh, in Chip Kelly's first year at UCLA. And then they came to Nippert stadium the next year, hoping to get revenge and did not get revenge. And both of those games were really defining games for Cincinnati because you know, UCLA is a respected program. Um, and it was, it was a big deal. So, yeah. 
I mean, recruiting wise, they're doing well. And I think you could be wrong. It's just like so far, I have not been convinced enough to say, to make bets that they're going to be any better than they have been in the last three years. I think you're wrong. I, for your sake, I hope I am. For my sake. All right. You're going to so you touched. On this year. What? You're going to be betting on them this year. I'm, I might. Yeah, I know. It, it's what it's, it, it's. So we talked the LSU game second week. That's a that's gonna define their season. Not yeah. they don't have to win it to to go on and do great things. Yeah, it's like they LSU is way more talented. They, they need should, to play them close. If they play them close and they even threaten beating them, yeah, I'm all in on the UCLA Bruins this year. They should win it to a hot Hawaii to open the season. Yep, and then close close loss or maybe even a win home to LSU. That's a cross country flight early in the season could be a trap game for LSU. You never know. And it is a late game for LSU. Yep. Right? Yep. 8:30 p.m. That's a later game for them. Um and then like you said at home to Fresno State. So coming out of that 2 and 1 with a close loss to LSU, I think they're in good shape going into conference play at Stanford, Arizona State, at Arizona, at Washington, Oregon, at Utah, Colorado, at USC and Cal. I think I think they can compete with USC um, for that South division title. Okay. So that's my prediction for UCLA. That's my big sleeper in the pack. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so I, I think here's this next one that's weird to me um, is Cal is number three in recruiting in the pack 12. Yeah. 29 very shocking. overall. Very shocking. Yeah, I found this this to be weird, and, like, I feel like we should be talking about them, like, a little bit higher, like, in the 6-7 spot, which I think, actually, normally we would be. Um, this is one of their higher, better recruiting classes. Um, are they one of the schools that actually has, like, a bunch of recruits? I think they are. Like, yeah, they actually have, they have like, 19. They have 19. Yeah, that's more um, than most of the other schools. And so. five, five of them are four stars. Wow. They have, they have a pretty pretty good amount of four stars like it's a solid class um and just for some reason i see cal as this backdrop program to every other team in the conference I agree. Um, it surprised me to see them so high uh you know i they haven't won a conference championship since 2006 and when they were co-champions with usc um i do feel positively about this team um, they don't have a great stadium or great facilities, in my opinion. Um, but they're in the Sunshine State, so I guess recruiting is easier for them. And uh, besides 2020, well, even with 2020, their head coach is 21 and 20 uh, during his time there. So we're going to see if this helps improve things. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know really if Justin Wilcox is going to be there all that long. I don't know. I, I mean, I think last season was kind of a blur. And I mean, if you air a, a blip, don't take too much out of it. They had a lot of cancellations. Yeah. And, yeah. I think uh, they only played three. They games. still, and they still managed to beat Oregon. So, yeah. I mean, um, I think if, if you beat Oregon and then you're one of these lower level Pac 12 teams, doesn't matter how many games you win, it's probably a successful season. True. Um, but before this past year, they were eight and five the year before in 2019, seven and six the year before that, after going five and seven for two straight years. So there, there was an improvement up until yeah. this past year. So being a very important year for Justin Wilcox, um, to show he can bounce back and keep that upward trajectory that they were on going. Yeah, uh, I agree. We'll see. I agree. Um, talk about their schedule. Yeah, let's look at their um, schedule. Home to Nevada is how they open up, and then they go at TCU. Um, and and, and I think that's a toss-up game. Yeah, um, I can. I think TCU should probably be winning that game, especially uh, at TCU. Yeah, at but. TCU, but TCU also wasn't very good last year, and they played mm -hmm. more games. Mm -hmm. um, Gary Patterson, though, man. Yeah, yeah, I think I think TCU wins that game, but there's potential that they start three and zero. If yep. not, two and one. And uh, then they play Washington. That's going to be a tough game for them. 
mm-hmm. at Washington. Yeah. And then they're, they're, they have Washington State at home, so they could win that game. Then they get – they're at Oregon. There's I don't see a possible way they, they walk away with a win there. Um, they could win at Colorado. They could win at Oregon State. They could win at Arizona. So, you know, right there, six games. I don't think they're beating USC. They could win at Stanford, and I don't think they're beating UCLA. So, I mean, you just seven, listed seven, eight, eight, eight games. Yeah. I think that's what you got to be shooting for. Get back on to that because we're at seven, eight wins before this past season. So, if you can get back up to that and then start building off of that, I think, I think you're in a good place. But if you don't do that and you start going the other way, Wilcox. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be out of there pretty. I don't quickly. think after this year, uh, unless they go like zero and twelve, or yeah, two yeah, and 12, unless it's just a horrendous yeah. season. If it's horrendous, I think he's gone. But if, if I think if they are a little under five hundred, he's still there. Um, he the next, the next year, he's he's on the hot seat. Yeah. Um, so, do you have anything more you want to add on Cal? Nope, we got two more left. Two more we're almost, left. We're almost through this. So, uh. Southern California, USC. <laughs> I love USC. I, I'm so they're nationally ranked at seventh uh, in recruiting, which um, is a massive jump from what the hell happened last year. I, I honestly, what happened was everyone thought that Clay Helton was going to get fired. Gotcha. And so no one wanted to commit to USC. Gotcha. Because uh, for the for the listeners and the viewers, they were 64th ranked last year nationally, yeah. and moved um, after up to being seventh. yes. So that I mean, talk about a jump. <laughs> yeah. So the year before, Clay Helton managed to pull a Pac-12 championship game out of his butt. Yep. And I, did they win that year? No. No, they didn't win it. They didn't win that year, but they made the Pac-12 Pac-12 championship game, which is something. I think everyone was surprised about considering how they started that year. And then last year they were also in the Pac-12 championship game and won? Lost. No, they lost to Oregon. So he he hasn't won yet, won the Pac-12 championship game, but he's there. And uh, I think that's where USC wants to be. They should be. I I think he needs to work on winning more, winning more non-conference games, frankly. Um, but you know, I, I have, I have long said that, uh, if, if USC fires Clay Helton, I think that, uh, an obvious candidate would be Luke Fickle to replace him. Um, and, but, but, but that being said, if he keeps making Pac-12 championship games, I don't think they're firing. Yeah. Um, because USC was down bad for a few years there and, uh. If, if USC is really going to be back to their mid 2000s form, um, this is the year it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really kind of all set up for them. Um, they have a, a preseason Heisman candidate at quarterback and Keaton Slovis, the best quarterback in the conference, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation. So, um, and their defense is really good. They're, they're good in the offensive line, defensive line. Everything sets up. Oregon's a little bit down. Like there's everything yeah. sets up where if they're going to be back for good and if Clay Helton's the guy to do it, this is the year that they're going to break out. Yeah. Because their I non-conference mean, schedule, I mean, they do play out Notre Dame, but their non-conference schedule it sets up where they're not going to have too many difficult trap games or they yeah. don't they, they should be winning all their non-conference except for maybe at Notre Dame, which and honestly, okay. I could see them winning at Notre Dame. Exactly. I mean, it's hard. It, I think it'll be a little hard to go to Notre Dame and win. That's a hard place to win, but I could see it happening uh, because I think Notre Dame is going to be a little bit down this year, just unloading from last year. Yeah. When's um, the last time USD did beat uh, Notre Dame? It's, I you know, like I'm it's, not sure. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about their schedule while you uh, look that up, but they, they start with San Jose State, which that's actually a, a solid non-conference team based off the results from last year. Uh, but I think they win them. It's at home. Then they get Stanford at home. Uh, so I think they win that. Washington, they're at Washington State, so I think they win that. Mm-hmm. Then they get Oregon State. They win that. So you're starting 4-0. You go to Colorado. 
probably also winning that five and zero. Utah, that's a tougher game, but also we talked about it earlier. We think Utah's down a little bit, so they probably win that. They're starting six and zero. They're rolling into Notre Dame. If they're six and zero and Notre Dame's lost one, they might have momentum. They might be be rolling into that game feeling like they're going to win, yeah. and, and they win. And then if they win that, I think they just steamroll everybody else. Yeah. Um, they sh- they are heavy favorites in the South. They should be winning the South yes. division. And they should be in the conference championship game. Um, I looked it up. They haven't beaten them since 2016, um, which was a little more recent than, I, than yeah. it feels like, um, but still. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, if they, be, if, if they make it to Notre Dame undefeated and then beat Notre Dame – I, Man, the media will go crazy. Yeah. USC is back. Yeah, the Trojan. Uh, I can I can I just can picture just it now. It, yeah, every everybody everybody but Joel Klatt will be like just sucking them off. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm I'm. This is a make or break for Clay Helton more than it is for UCL USC on a whole because USC's got a shit ton of money. Yeah. So like, I think expectations are super high, and I think that's. Yes. That could actually hurt Clay Helton this year. Um, if he doesn't do it this year, I mean, he's going into a seventh season now. Yeah. It doesn't feel like he's been there for seven years, but. You know, and he, life from, happens from everything I've heard, he is literally the nicest human. Um, like just an absurdly grateful guy to be at USC, like yeah. interacts with the fans and just, uh, you could not. And like if they fire him, you could not fire a nicer guy. But nice guys don't always win football games. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you, do you have anything else to say on USC? Nope. All right, then let's move on to our final team. And I actually, actually don't... sneaky playoff pick USC. That's all I'm going to say. Oh yeah, uh, they're definitely like in my top five or six to make the playoff. Uh, I think they're going to disappoint me, so I'm not putting them in the top four. But historically, uh, it's right to feel like they're going to disappoint you. Um, But I, I, I I put ten bucks on them making the playoff, and hopefully, I make something. Um, So, uh, are you ready to move on to the next one? Oregon, Oregon, Oregano. Uh, They're nationally ranked at number six. Solid, quack, quack, quack. Solid recruiting class of twenty three commits. Um, I think they actually had the most in the conference. 19 four stars, four three stars, no five stars. Um, but 19 four stars. 19 four stars, Good man. Lord. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, I'll take it any day. Stacking uh, that, stacking that freaking roster, man. Currently ranked number one in the Pac 12. Last year they were number one in the Pac 12, and moving forward, they're number one in the Pac 12. Uh, their previous national rank was 11th and their next year rank is 21st. I think that they move up next year. Um, a lot of the better players tend to wait yeah. until the end of the season to sign or at least part, part of the way into the season. Um, and uh, you know, when they, ha- when they announced Mario Cristobal as the head coach, I wasn't super sold on it. Like it was fine hire. It, ma- it made sense to me, but I also just like, wasn't, I wasn't blown away by it, but he's taken Oregon way farther than they were when he took over. Uh, what was it? Willie Taggart was, was. Yeah. So yeah. I was in my research. Uh, Willie I Taggart com- wishes he would not have left Oregon for Florida state, man. Uh, I completely forgot that Willie Taggart was there for one, one season. One season. I completely forgot. Uh, I, that's gotta be on the list of dumbest coaching like coaching decisions and like job decisions of yeah. all time because he got fl- fired from florida state for honestly dumb reasons yeah uh he shouldn't have been fired at florida state but man uh just completely random yeah well, well anyways back to oregon uh it, they're good <laughs> they're they're a solid so I, I, team. I like mario cristobal because i like what he's done with the style of play um, yeah, we're familiar with Oregon being that, you know, high flying option offense, no defense. Yeah, but he's and they flipped are not it anymore. I think it's more um, it's better if they really want to compete 
at the, the in the playoffs yeah. is now they're one of the most dominant teams on defense. They've got so much talent on that side of the ball. Um, they've also upgraded. Their, they've taken over the spot from Wisconsin, basically, as the best offensive line um, yeah. pretty much every year now in, yeah. in college football, which is another big um, positive big, if, big if, if you got playoff aspirations. Um, they run the ball more. They just they play a more traditional football. Yeah, but it's also more successful if you yeah. look at it on, on the yeah. grand scheme of things. So I agree. So I'm looking at their schedule. And and I, we can, we'll go through their schedule here in a minute. But what happens? Oregon beats Ohio State if it happens. And then it happen. All the, all the Ohio State fans. Ah. I would love for it to happen, but they don't play usc in the regular yeah. season their toughest what game happened? is at washington like i'm 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 about to give you a scenario that would blow blow my mind if it happened it's not going to happen but i hope it does usc beats notre dame and is undefeated going into the pac-12 championship game oregon is undefeated going into the pac-12 championship game i like it and we're looking at having potentially two Pac-12 teams in the playoff. It's the discussion we have every year in the SEC is like Alabama plays Florida or Georgia. It was actually Georgia for the most part. Right. Alabama plays Georgia every year. It's like, well, can both of them make the playoff? Right. But now it's with the Pac-12. I like where your head's at. Uh, and like I, I generally think the Pac-12 is uh, the fourth best conference uh, in the country, but – if that happened, I mean, there's no denying that both teams are extremely good. And then the Pac-12 championship game is a close game. What? Maybe, maybe I like it. Got, maybe we've got two Pac-12. T- Dude, I, I just I want I want different teams in the playoffs. I, I do too. I just I do want too. different teams. I do too. I need some parity. Yeah, I'd love to see USC make it because they haven't ever made it. Uh, I, I agree. I would like to see some different teams. Oregon hasn't made it since the first playoff, right? It was the yeah, first but, playoff that they made. It's not they're not that they're not that far removed from it. Yeah. Um, I would love to see that happen. Yeah, I agree. But so their their schedule they they start off with Fresno State, and then the, their second game is at Ohio State. If they win that, they're solidly ranked top five. Second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and then they they get Stony Brook. Feel bad for Stony Brook if uh, if God. they do lose that oh. game to Ohio State and they're coming and they just take out all that frustration. Oh man, <laughs> and them them kids. Uh, then they've got Arizona, uh, Stanford, Cal, UCLA, Colorado, Washington, Washington State, Utah, and then Oregon State. I don't see them losing a game in the Pac-12. I don't either. Not on the surface. But it does. It is difficult. They do have all three of their toughest road or all their toughest conference games are, are on the road at yeah. UCLA, at Washington, and at Utah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you that. I also about. think that um, the Pac-12 like definitely said, "All right, Oregon, you got into the Pac-12 championship game last year, and you shouldn't have. So we're going to give you just a slightly tougher schedule just to yeah. penalize you, which I think was their dumb the dumbest thing they could have done." But the Pac-12 is ran by idiots, so it is what it is. Um, so, so I think we both think Oregon, USC, Pac-12 championship game. Yeah. Potentially a big old matchup if they both if they both go run on runs or maybe just lose one game. I mean, if they're both if they're both lost one game, I think one of, the winner still makes the playoff. Yeah. Potentially, depending on who else. Depends on- yeah. What else happens somewhere else? But I think both teams could make the playoffs being one, one team, one loss. Um, especially, I think especially Oregon is more likely to make the playoff than USC with the loss. Just being, a safer pick. I mean, USC is just, like you said, traditionally blown it. Every time we hype up USC, it's like, oh, then they lose three out of the first four. And it's like, well, shit. Well, and if, I, if I'm going to pick a game that USC loses, it's against Notre Dame. And yeah. I don't think Notre Dame is as strong of a loss as Ohio State. Yeah. So. 
I agree. Right. Uh, so who, who are you picking? Who you got to win the Pac-12? Um, I pick USC to win it. Underdog pick, like I said, UCLA. Watch out for UCLA this year. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Oregon to to win it. Uh, and my underdog pick is Washington. Okay, fair enough. I could see it. So, well, uh, mm-hmm. we appreciate everyone uh, listening to all of our opinions on the Pac-12. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can leave us a comment, tweet at us at uh, fourth and or four and long winded uh, on Twitter. Um, we're also on Facebook, so you can like us there. Um, yeah, you have anything else, Dan? Now, who do you uh, who do you want to talk about next week? Let's uh, let's tease our next week episode. We got the a- ACC and the Conference USA and Independence left. What do you want to hit on? Um. I'm thinking Conference USA, and then we'll finish strong with Independent, and then ACC as our final. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, we'll see you next time for uh, Stated Conference on the Conference USA. Thanks, guys. Have a good week.